I watched over 100 hours of YouTube, so now I'm a 3D printing expert. Well, it turns out that's not how it works. And in just my first week, I managed to cut myself on the side of a metal scraper. I did exactly whatever YouTuber tells you not to do, which ruined my next print. And I skipped a step or three trying to print a full plate with untested settings. So of course I got to learn how to clean my vat. So that was cool, I guess. And that's just a small handful of the things that I did wrong and I learned from, but even still, I've been surprised at how well everything's come out, despite all the mistakes that I've made. Hopefully you can learn from some of the stupid things that I've done and I can still inspire you to try 3D printing for yourself. Hi, my name is Dave. Let's jump into it. I set out with a simple goal, to print my favorite monster from D&D. And it came out perfect. I guess I need to set some bigger goals. But I'm getting ahead of myself. First, here's what I'm working with. I decided to go with the relatively new mid-size printer, the Saturn III Ultra 12K, and for resin, I went with the Sariatech ABS Lycan Metal Gray. I'll give my first impressions on the printer near the end of the video. So I ordered everything that I thought I might need. Gloves, a silicon mat, some washing and carrying machines, and much, much more, and then patiently waited for it all to arrive. Once I had everything set up, I took this handsome devil's advice from Faux Hammer and printed something right away. And the first print was a success. But here we already make it to my first mistakes. So let's start a counter. How many do you think that I made in the first night? I'll give you a hint. It was more than five. First mistake. This darn rook was so well adhered to the plate that I scratched it. And then in my impatience, I only dunked it a few times in IPA before immediately putting it underneath the UV light still damp. So in the end, I don't think that I wash this well enough, and there are still a few glossy spots on the final product. But, you know, I made something solid out of toxic liquid. That's pretty cool. So I made three mistakes in my first print. Not a great track record so far. Next, I decided to turn back to conventional wisdom, and I printed out one of these bad boys. If you're new to the hobby, calibration prints come in many different shapes and sizes. I happened across this one so many times that I already knew how to read it. And it's thin, so it prints quickly, which is nice. So using Lychee Slicer and finding the community voted settings for my printer and resin combo, I queued this guy up so I would have a baseline to see what I was working with. And I expected to be printing out a small handful of those over the first night, but instead, that one was pretty much perfect, which meant that I had just enough time to print a model before I went to bed. Little did I know that I was making two more mistakes with that decision, one of which is the number one mistake that beginners make. A few hours later, I came back, and now I get to share with you five more mistakes. This is not my best night. The print was done, and it was of my favorite monster, a beholder. It was complete, and I was incredibly lucky, because that mistake that I mentioned, the newbie one, it was that I never tightened the build plate after my previous print. Yikes. Luckily, the Saturn III Ultra isn't a flimsy piece of junk, and there is a good chance that maybe a lesser machine might not have saved me from myself. As far as I can tell, this printed out perfectly. I think it's pretty freaking cool. But there is one flaw, and it was a mistake that I made during assembly. And it was when I was gluing one of these tentacles to the head, there is a rather large gap. I'm pretty sure that a piece of support got stuck in there. Oh well. When I started that print, I actually made a second mistake. Just enough time before bed? I wonder if that rang any alarm bells for you when you heard that. Turns out, cleaning, Removing supports, curing, and taking photos is not something that can be done in 10 minutes. Who would have guessed? Whatever. Worth it. And to top it all off, I managed two more mistakes. One of which was cutting myself on the side of this metal scraper. And then, while trying to uh, pull one of these off the plate, I left a giant gouge in my plate. Like I said, not one of my best nights. So, for those of you who are following along, I think that makes eight mistakes in my first night. How many do you think I made by night seven? Even still, I was super thrilled. This was one of the reasons that I bought a machine and I got to hold it in my hand on my first night. Super cool. But it wasn't the real reason that I got a printer. I had set out with a simple goal to print my own beholder. Turns out it was much easier than I expected. I did it on my first night. It was only my third print and it was perfect despite all of the mistakes that I made. I guess I need bigger ambitions. 
All right, well, I hadn't dared to dream real big. The real reason that I got a 3D printer was to print big dragons. My buddy had a booth at Gen Con, and he sold some epic minis. He's the guy that I got my mini from for my second ever painted miniature from my Gen Con video that I showed off. I also got these awesome prints from him. Uh, I had no idea that in just a few short months, I would be able to print it myself. Pretty cool. So as I was saying, a bigger miniature. Let's see what it takes. But first, I want to experiment with a few settings. If I'm going to print bigger minis, I want to leverage my machine's unique advantage, the ACF release film, which is one of the reasons I chose the Saturn 3 Ultra. It allows the plate to pull away 30% easier, which means it can move faster, which means it should be able to print faster. So I did whatever YouTuber tells you not to do and copied the settings I saw in a video and started a new print. It was just another calibration print, nothing that stupid, but it didn't turn out that well. Who would have thought? Starting to notice a trend. This print's exposure settings were a no-go. But the video did say that there was some success increasing the lift speed, so I, what if I did just that, and only that? I went back to the default exposure settings that work so well, and I simply bumped up the lift speed. So I ran a third calibration test, and it looks pretty darn good. Almost as good as the first. So I said, screw it, and I decided to print out a mini with these new settings. It, and it turned out great. I thought that this would be a good test considering how intricate this bow is. And I liked it so much that the next day I printed a second one with my previous default settings, just so that I could compare them side by side. And can you tell a difference? I can't. I mean, they're the same exposure settings for the same duration, but one of these was an hour faster. Can you tell them apart? I'll tell you right now, to my eye, they are basically identical. But now you're looking at photos with a three times zoom from my phone, with the lighting that is so bright you can't even tell that they were printed in the metal gray resin that I used. So under the 3x zoom on my phone, you be the judge. I mean, there are a couple of differences, but let's be real, it's close enough. When I prime them, you won't be able to tell them apart. So we're off to the races. The whole reason I did this was so that I could print something bigger, faster. And I didn't want to wait anymore. It was time to print something bigger. I needed to set a new goal. What would it be? I went for another classic. So that was only one more mistake for two days. But of course, this video is about making mistakes and the next one is a doozy. But just real quick, I wanted to say hi. Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Dave. My goal is to inspire you to be more creative and elevate your hobbies to new heights. There will be more resin printing in the future videos. So subscribe so you don't miss on my future mistakes. So bigger, what about a Tarasque? That should be imposing. I found one that I liked online, bought the file, got it set up in Lychee, but there was still room on the build plate. So I figured I paid for the whole build plate. I'm gonna use the whole build plate. I added some other models and their bases and then I left it to print. And when I came back, I found this. This is where I'd put my Tarasque if I had one. So I made, may have made a couple of uh, changes since my last print that theoretically shouldn't have made a difference. And instead of testing them, I sent them through with a full build plate, and then I didn't check on it for over three hours. I was video editing, it was important, I was in the flow. So I wasted about half a day of print time, and I had to refresh my memory on how to clean out a vat by watching YouTube videos. Not only was this a massive failure, but it turns out that I had made two other mistakes over the last couple of days. One was that I tossed out my bottle that the resin came in. And two, I didn't save any supports from my previous prints. So I had no place to dump resin, and so that was a ruined piece of Tupperware. And no support scraps means that I couldn't use them as a handle for the cool, you know, clean your vat trick, and I had to do it the old-fashioned way. That was fun. In my defense, the changes I made should have been fine. So to prove it to myself, I ran a print with the same mini that I had done twice before, just so I could compare it against the other two to see if there was any difference. And it's just as perfect as the others. What do you think? Can you spot the difference? Which is the newest one? It was about 15 minutes faster than the previous fastest. They all look the same to me. So the changes I made were fine. But what would be the problem then? Well, it couldn't have been a level, an unlevel bed because this one printed out just fine and so has everything since. I don't actually know. I'm guessing it was because the build plate was full and it lost the tug of war, but... I, if you think you know why, you can let me know down in the comments. All right, I needed a win. So I set everything back to default. Speed wasn't gonna be a factor this time because I was going to print it overnight. And that was another mistake. 
I'm not a light sleeper, but I am a light fall sleeper. I cannot fall asleep if there is a TV on, a clock ticking, or if there are crickets or grasshoppers outside my window. I simply cannot ignore those sounds. You know what else makes that list? A resin printer in the other room. I should have known better. So I busted out the noise canceling earbuds and I was eventually able to fall asleep. And then I woke up to this bad boy. Pretty darn cool. And basically flawless. I have no complaints with the quality, but the images online made it seem like he'd be bigger. And the fact that I had more room on my build plate should have been a dead giveaway. I'll have to learn how to scale and reprint this guy to be a little bit more imposing in the future, but that is a future video. So here's a fun little story. I waited a day for a coupon code so I could purchase this Tarask at 50% off. Turns out I already owned it. It came with the welcome package that I had gotten about a week before. Whoopsie. Luckily, Morena was super cool and let me swap it out for another model. Maybe this one will be able to scratch my itch for a biggie, bigger mini. Biggie mini. I certainly hope so. It is the model that got me inspired to finally grab a resin printer in the first place. When I was at my buddy's booth at Gen Con, I saw something that I knew I had to have. But I wanted to make it for myself. And this would have to be my last print because the end of the week was approaching fast. If my count is correct, we should be at 16 mistakes. Let's see how many more I can commit in the last couple of days with a print that takes three plates in over 20 hours. The model I had in mind was Tiamat. It was the model I had to have. It was by far the coolest mini that I saw at Gen Con. But in order to make the deadline that I set for myself, I had to intentionally run two plates overnight to make sure that I had it in time, ready in time for the filming of this video, assuming there were no mistakes. The second plate, I even chanced running out of resin to meet that deadline. I kept everything default since I really didn't want to mess up a print that was going to cost around $30 in 20 hours. I bought my printer to print a giant mini, so I'm going to print a giant mini. I said I wanted something bigger. Well, I made something bigger. Unfortunately, you don't get to see her in all of her glory yet. Everything turned out perfect. No mistakes for all three of the plates. But it turns out that I had made two other mistakes with my earlier prints. You really want to prime your models before assembly, which I didn't do for these two. So to avoid making this mistake for a third time, I still need to prime this gal. But even still, the torso is the size of the Tarasque, and that's just one of 17 parts of this legendary five-headed, sorry for the noise, five-headed dragon. So freaking awesome. So I want to finish this before I put it together. And I think it's gonna turn out really, really cool. But I can't help but think that I could make it even bigger. If I chop one of these wings in half, I could turn this thing into a freaking monster. Let me know if you'd like to see that in the comments. So all together, I managed to make 18 mistakes in just my first week of resin 3D printing. But if you know me, then you know that I love to fail. It's the best way to learn. And I learned a ton over this week. But the biggest takeaway for me was just how accessible everything was. Despite all of the mistakes I made, everything has turned out better than I expected. My first impressions of the machine I bought, the um, Saturn III Ultra, they're all positive. It saved me for myself. The prints have been in a higher quality than I expected for my first printer. It's not as noisy or as smelly as I expected. And the ACF film means that I can still tweak it to go faster and it doesn't compromise on the detail. My only annoyance so far has been that I can't use Lychee to send prints wirelessly to my machine. I don't know who's at fault for that, but hopefully the two companies can work together and get that fixed before too long. All that said, I just want to take a moment to encourage you to give this a try for yourself. It's not hard. It's super fun. And no amount of planning is a substitute for the real thing. Watching YouTube videos is great, but eventually you just got to glove up and try it yourself. I provided a bunch of links in the description to help you do just that. This is a wonderful new hobby and it unlocks so many more things. I have always wanted to learn Blender, and now I can take what I design and make it real. I'm going to print a donut. <laughs> I've always wanted to make cosplay, and now I can print parts for it. I want to make custom resin dice, and I think that I could print the masters with this. And I've, you know, always wanted to design games with minis in mind. I can prototype for our board game now, and I can make custom inserts for some of my favorite games. The sky is the limit. So I'm just incredibly excited to have this as an option moving forward. It is going to enable me to be so much more creative. I hope that you'll stick around as I continue to learn and make dope stuff. 
If you want a place to talk about 3D printing or anything related to the hobby space, really, come join us in the Tabletop Craft Discord. It is a community for people like you. If you made it to this end of the video, thank you for your time. Toss me a like if you wouldn't mind. And if you're looking for ways to nurture your creativity, I share the best methods to be more creative while on my trip to this year's Gen Con. My name is Dave Jeltima. I hope that you enjoyed my mistakes, and I'll see you in that video.